lined up. First of all, I'm going to be speaking with Mr. Monsieur Lakota of the Congress of the People. Sir, how are you today? Thank you for speaking with us. Um, everybody is very aware of the tough space the minister had to, in which to manoeuvre. Um, do you think that enough was said in terms of the students, first of all? Do you think that the students' needs were addressed today? And also, what's your thoughts on what was said about the SOEs? Well, first of all, uh, let me say that it's a very depressing uh, a budget, uh, medium-term budget speech because, well, he said something about the education of the children. I don't know where he's going to get the money from. If he announces that he is still going to pour more money into the SAA and ESCOM, state-owned enterprises which have already been consuming huge amounts of money and which are not contributing nothing to the fiscals to make it possible for us to meet the, the needs of the people. It's, this is throwing away a lot of good money that should be saved for something else. And then there is a, the sadness that he announces that uh, the, the, nuclear, uh, uh, the nuclear program will continue and that they are going to carry it forward at an affordable pace. What affordable, what he means by affordable, I don't know because we, our debt levels have hit the ceiling and with that nuclear thing they are adding a trillion on top of the burden that we already have. As a matter of fact, we are failing year in and year out. We are failing now to, to pay deficit on interest on debt. Which means by the time we have to pay that, the money, it will be out of control. There is simply, I, I see no single imaginative approach to this, and we can only accept that it, he has failed us. The rent, was, even as he was speaking, the rent was going down. I think now it's probably 1.3, 1.4, something like that. Mr. Lakota, thank you so much for speaking my, with us today. Problem. That was Monsieur Lakota of COPE. I'm now going to be speaking with Yunus Karim, who's the chairperson of the Finance Committee in Parliament, an ANC member himself. Chair, thank you for speaking with us. Um, Mr. Lakota just informed me now that while the minister was delivering his speech, the rand was dropping. Um, what are your initial responses to what the minister had to say today? Well, uh, I think we should give him a chance, the government a chance. Uh, in the first instance, with such a challenging economic environment, it's very hard to have a redistributive budget. So as the ANC, we welcome the focus on social spending, the uh, 948 billion Million rounds allocated to budget infrastructure um, uh, infrastructure over the next three years, as well as the increase in the allocation to high education from 77 to 97 billion. The focus in the whole uh, uh, speech, it seemed to me, was also on youth development. And in fact, the minister said that two thirds of the spending of the budget is on the social rights in the constitution. That's to be welcomed, as is the focus on. Um, the uh, need for a greater cooperation between uh, the government, parliament, business, trade unions and civil society. We need a massive concerted effort to get it right. Uh, so we think the private sector should play a more active role. We welcome, for example, the CEO's initiative that they will uh, allocate 1.5 billion. Uh, and there are two programs they have in mind, the youth internship program and, of course, the small businesses. But obviously, even as the ANC, we are concerned to see the proposed increases in the borrowing and that 15 percent of the budget will be consumed in the third year from now on servicing the debt and obviously that concerns us as indeed the fact that regrettably with the low growth rates uh, the revenue raise is going to fall short of about 58 billion runs so obviously more than ever before we need all of us, government and parliament and civil society, mind you, to focus on the need on the quality of the spending and the efficiency of the spending by government to be improved, uh, to actually ensure that um, wastage and corruption are dealt with far more decisively. We welcome the minister's stress on uh, taking action against those who don't perform, either in the boards of state-owned entities or the managers. Uh, he can get the boards to act on the managers, obviously. And, and we feel really at Parliament, we ourselves, the Finance Committee, the Appropriations Committee, 
the Public Enterprises Committee and other relevant committees like SCOPA and Parliament as a whole, all committees in fact, should be far more effective in our oversight. We simply cannot afford to continue to rescue state-owned entities that are badly governed, badly managed and are accused of corruption and mismanagement. And so it is too that we endorse the inquiry into the performance of state-owned entities by the Public Enterprises Committee and other inquiries that are related to the need to ensure that state-owned entities use the limited resources we have more effectively in the developmental interests of our country, but primarily the poor and disadvantaged. Also, note that the minister says that 95% of our wealth resides with 10% of the population. This reinforces the need for radical economic transformation, the need to ensure that all of our people benefit from it, but primarily the poor, the working class and the disadvantaged more generally. Otherwise, a social explosion is looming. Chair, thank you so much for your analysis. Uh, Bulilani has a, a, a guest on the other side, so Bulilani, it's over to you. Thank you so much, Abra. Obviously, all sectors of society are watching this mini-budget framework uh, with close eyes. Uh, business as well uh, watching today. And uh, joining me now is the president uh, of the Black Business Council, Dr. Danisa Baloy. Uh, does this uh, mini-budget framework give business any sense of confidence, given that uh, it's been said that the business confidence levels are uh, very low? I think we have no choice. We have to all pull together as South Africans, as the minister said. And even if he hadn't said it, we have to. Uh, we have to make South Africa work for all South Africans. And I think to a very large extent, if we look at uh, some of the levers that are there, being on the CEO's forum, he actually mentioned that we have two levers where government is working together with, uh, with uh, the private sector on the initiative of the skills development program for young people and also for the small, medium-sized development uh, uh, program, the SMME program. The reality of the situation is that we can do more around that. Uh, I think he talked about procurement reform that could help in terms of enhancing new participants uh, within the framework of procurement. We've done it before and it's worked. And I think we can do it again if we have confidence. We need to be bold in creating new cakes instead of saying uh, we're going to enhance what already exists let us go out there and find new entrepreneurs and they are there they're just struggling they need a little bit of a lift uh, to 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 get going then we can have economic growth the day that south africa puts its faith in developing being small medium-sized enterprises in earnest Part of the problem will go away. They will they will involve, uh, involve the employment of more people. We know that. But then I think the biggest elephant in the room is the partial privatization of uh, of SAA. We're hoping that it will be inclusive. That uh, uh, people historically uh, left out, like black business, will be able to 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 participate. Will engage the the minister to find out. Will it be an IPO? How are they going to ensure that there's a broader participation in the shareholding of, uh, of uh, SAA so we avoid what happened in the past with the partial privatization where really not a lot of people benefited? In their exit from, um, from uh, a telecom as well, how is it going to benefit more people? Or we are going to see the same old, same old, the same people who benefit all the time benefiting because they have the money. I think we can be innovative and include more participation um, uh, 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 through that. And maybe some of the IPOs have not worked, but maybe let us try to broaden the base this time, maybe saying people who are in those sectors, can they participate um, to enhance what they're doing? But to leave it to the market, we'll find that the people with the money are going to grab those shares and there won't be any empowerment even though he spoke empowerment. On that I give him 10 out of 10. He emphasized economic empowerment and I think uh, unless we do that as South Africa, our country is going nowhere slowly. Right, Dr. Tanisa Paloy, thank you very much for your time. She's, of course, the president of the Black Business Council. On that note, we'll cross back to studio.